Hey guys, as I'm sure you heard, CCP dropped a pretty big news bomb on all of us today by announcing that EVE Online would at least partially become free to play. So this is too big of a thing for me not to create a video about. Tonight's video is going to be about another subject, but this is going to have to take its place tonight because this is, pretty, this is a pretty big deal. And I want to go over what this actually means for players. So what they're calling it is clone states. And basically what that means is there's going to be two classes of accounts. There's going to be the free class, which is basically anyone who is unsubbed or unplexed. Those people are all going to be the alpha state. So if we come down here, got the alpha state right there, right? So the alpha state is limited to certain skills and to certain ships and certain modules. As a result of being limited by skills, their modules are also limited. So basically, as a brand new player, this is awesome. If you're if you're a new player that's like been thinking about getting into Eve but you've never been quite sure what this is is this is a much better trial account. It's what trial accounts should have always been. Because Eve is such a complex game and a game that's so hard to get into that it really takes some time to get your head wrapped around all this stuff and to get a, a grasp of what Eve is and why Eve is great. And you can't do that in 14 days. You can't even do that in 21 days, right? You just can't. <clears throat> so what this does is it allows people to just play around, toy with it, log in here or there, train all the free-to-play skills, which are some decent skills. We're going to get into that in a minute. Get all those basic skills out of the way while they're not paying for the game, while they're exploring, seeing what they like, missioning, mining, PvP, PvE, whatever. So they're able to explore the game, get used to the game, and maybe even get their foot in the door with a corporation, with an alliance, start experiencing what some of the camaraderie in the game is like, experience the community, and it's what, as a result, it's going to, in my opinion, result in better growth of new players for the game. It will attract new players and it will keep new players. What they've had in the past is they've had the big, huge battles, like I think it was B4RB and then this great war we just had. And the news that the coverage they get in like PC Gamer and all the other places gets a lot of new players to come to the game. But then they shoot themselves in the foot because 14 days just doesn't do it. 21 doesn't. All those new players end up never subscri subbing, subscribing to the game or plexing or ever continuing to play so it's almost like a, a wasted opportunity um, but even more so what I think this means what I think the the if you read between the lines here EVE Online has been in a slow descent for I don't know two or three years now four years five just a slow descent it's, it's stayed at a steady level but you can see it's starting to fall off a little bit the game is old it's been around a long time so it's got to compete with a lot of really great free-to-play games and a lot of really, really great pay-once games or wants to pay or whatever you want to call that. So <clears throat> what that means is it's harder and harder for a subscription model to compete in this era of games when all the other games are going free-to-play for something like this. Now, CCP has a lot of infrastructure based on those servers and uh, a lot of stuff that has real costs and they can't distribute any of that because it would open them up for exploits and cheating and stuff like that. So reading between the lines, the way I see this is I see that this is CCP's way of testing the waters of free to play. Right now it's just kind of free to free to play. So if you put yourself in CCP's situation, you're a company that makes pretty much all of its money from one game you're trying to branch out into other games like Eve Valkyrie, which is awesome, Gunjack, but they haven't really quite caught on. They'll probably catch on in the future. I think Valkyrie will do well, but those games are in the future still. There's no revenue really coming from those yet. So their main source of revenue is Eve Online, and if they were to just switch and say today or tomorrow, we're going 100% free to play, then they basically just shut off 
the majority of their revenue. And it's a huge gamble on their part to do something like that when they don't know it's going to work. So instead of potentially ruining their entire company over a gamble, which I think ultimately would have paid off anyway, um, is they're going to just give it a try. Let's allow some people, let's allow people to play some of the game. Let's allow them to have the basics just enough to where they can experience what makes the game great, just enough to where they can see that this is a game worth investing in, and then we'll start to collect money from them as they plex, which ultimately benefits CCP even if they plex their accounts, or if they sub, or if they uh, end up buying in-game items. There may be some people who never plex or sub who just buy vanity items like Dota. Um, I play Dota here and there, not so much in the last month or two, but uh, it's crazy the amount of stuff people will pay for just like they want a silly costume for their carrier in, character in game because I guess it makes them feel cool. More power to them, uh, it's not my thing, but it works. Dota makes money for Valve or whoever makes it. So this is CCP's way of getting their foot in the door, tr testing the water, seeing seeing if there's an interest in this and then based on that if it's wildly successful and we see that there's a huge increase in new players and that those players then all start to end up being paid players buying free to play items plexing etc then CCP is going to expand it and they're going to slowly work it up until the point where they get rid of subscriptions altogether that's my theory this is just a test run, and if it works well, then all of EVE will be free to play in the next two to three years. Um, but they'll, they'll roll it out slowly, so the free to play side of it will slowly grow is what I think they'll do. So let's talk about this a little bit more. In November, you already know we got the command burst or uh, command module changes. I haven't really researched those much yet. I know basically that they're going to require people to to be on grid and it looked from what I saw it looked like some really good changes but I haven't researched them yet I did research this so my basic takeaways here here are my predictions and here are my things that I think are gonna happen so for one you can train let me pull it up here there's the new character or the uh, skill browser looks pretty sweet right here you can see where tech 2 modules are unaccessible on a free-to-play account, you've got to go to Omega, right? I think it's a good move on their part. Lots of question and answers right there. Uh, basically, what I've told you so far, one thing, I was thinking, oh, well, what if you know a player like me, who I've already trained all the skills I want to train, I could happily give up skill training and not train a bad in 21 ever again and be just fine. Because right now, it's just, you know, I'm basically training stuff that doesn't matter because I might as well train something. And I thought, well, maybe I'll just go free-to-play. But no, if you're a high-skilled pilot and you go free-to-play, you automatically get limited back down to what the max of this would be. And you can see it's a level 1 armor layering, level 1 EM armor compensation. Another thing is this is going to be skill or, or race-specific. So my original pilot was Kaldari, which means I'm going to be limited to Kaldari ships, right? So... You can see here like repair systems four. Down here you come to the spaceship uh, skills. Cruiser four, destroyer four, frigate four, industrial four, mining frigate, no industrial one, okay, mining frigate four, right? But you've got anchoring one so you can still do bubbles, that's pretty good. But let's go to the next thing. So you can probably plex a free to play account in two months pretty easily I'll probably do a trial where I'll set up a new account and plex it in two months just to show you how it's done um, let's see it would make sense for anyone starting the game to fully train all of these skills maybe you can skip the mining skills but to fully train all these skills going towards whatever you're wanting to do if it's PvP then you can get rid of the mining you can get rid of the mass production you can get rid of most of the industry. I think there's a couple things that might require that. Um, you need biology. Get rid of all that stuff and just focus on the PvP skills. Max all of those out free to play and then go ahead and plex your account. 
So it allows you to kind of get a free head start if you're willing to be patient and take the time to do it because it might be slower to train. I'm not sure I heard something about skill training may be slower. All right, so the next thing is that multi-boxing is going to become more common. If you can have unlimited free-to-play accounts, then as you know, people are getting better computers, it's easier and easier to run multiple accounts. There's no reason why you're not going to see 10 gank catalysts in high set ganking people, 20, 30. Beyond that, what was the other one? For trade accounts, uh, you could have a trade all in every single market hub, right? You could be, you could set up an awesome network with five or six accounts. It would be pretty sweet. So the next thing is that, let's see, I already talked about that. I think it will result in more new players for the game and be a good thing for the game. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So I think overall it's a good thing for the game. I think that this is going to be a great way for CCP to get people interested in the game. It's a great way for people to have time to understand the game and to get into it. I'm going to work towards some, some more newbie content, whereas most of my stuff is kind of aimed at the intermediate area of players, players who would be already familiar with the game and already subbed looking to take it to the next level and go from just a regular player to maybe a slightly more skilled player, even a pro player that's uh, very good at the game. Uh, I think now with this I'm probably going to do some things like how to plex your account in t uh, two months is what I, I suspect with those skills. Two months on a free-to-play account. Uh, I'll do something like how to uh, get your first kill on a free-to-play account and do some frigate PvP and destroy your PvP. I guarantee it's possible. With level 4 skills, it's definitely possible. There's still more stuff to be sorted out and to find out about this and how it's actually going to be implemented, but I think it's pretty sweet. I'm excited about it. I like the command, uh, command deal. Let's have a look at that real quick. Command burst. I think that's cool. I think it's ultimately going to... Uh, help. I've always thought that, I've always been on the side that command modules should be on grid. There should be, uh, as they say, some sort of counterplay against command modules. You know, if there's logistics on, on grid, you have the ability to try to neutralize the logistics. Same thing, if there's something benefiting the fight, it should be on grid. I think that's a really good change. I think that uh, the way they implemented it, you know, it's so completely new way of doing it so it's going to be interesting to see how that works out but these are two really awesome changes and I think uh, you know there's probably more to come this is all coming out in November so not long, two months two months we're going to see this I'm looking forward to it and um, yeah just imagine playing EVE with 100,000 people online right now I play most of the time with less than 20,000 online so with five times more players, the amount of extra PvP in the game, the amount of extra wars, you know, territorial wars, um, just sheer content, it's going to be awesome. I don't know that it'll get to 100,000. I hope it will. It'll certainly go up, and, you know, I think 30, 40, 50,000 is almost guaranteed as people see this and a lot of people who thought about playing the game I get a lot of comments like that where people say something like well I've always wanted to play Eve but I have never had time or I have wanted to play Eve but it just seemed like it was too complex you know these kind of comments tell me that these people just needed more time in game to understand the game and to get hooked on the game and they would have been players so I think it's gonna be cool and uh, that's it for this video I will see you guys next time.